This week on CrossFeed. President Bush sued over prayer. God's love is power. God's take on the mortgage crisis. It was a righteous wave, dude. And why do you behave? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. Welcome, everybody. It's good to be back with you. Anything fascinating happened to you this week, Jim? Hey, come on. We're superheroes. What could happen? No, not that I can say. <laughs> Just looking forward to Columbus Day being tomorrow, and... Uh, Having a day off, which I haven't had for about three weeks now, so um, it's been busy, busy, busy. You, so, had a great wedding yesterday. You get Columbus Day off. This is madness. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Kids are out of school, and uh, the office is closed. Huh. Fascinating. Must be a Massachusetts thing, huh? Well, it's... Probably more here than it was when I was in the Midwest because this is considered peak uh, leaf peeping. Okay. You've probably never heard the phrase leaf peeping before, have you? No, but I got the idea of what it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that. That's the that's all kind of a local term, leaf peeping. So, what about you? Anything exciting out there in Iowa? Oh yeah, fascinating. I went to an allergist this week. I <laughs> I found out. Yeah, you because know, I've been having sinus problems for years. I You're allergic to work? What? You're allergic to rear, to work? Uh, no. No, but I am allergic, allergic to preaching. I'm allergic to being in my office and in my home oh. and outside. Because <laughs> I'm allergic to, there's some mold over at church. I'm not sure where it is. Nobody can find it. I'm allergic to that. I'm allergic to uh, several different kinds of pollen, some from plants that pollinate in the spring, some from plants that pollinate in the summer, and some from plants that pollinate in the fall. So he says, so keep your windows shut. (laughs) Don't go outside. (laughs) Like, oh, yeah, good plan. (laughs) Just suffer from the mold inside. Yeah, yeah. And I'm also allergic to uh, feathers, which is no big deal. Um, and, And I'm allergic to dogs and cats. And guess what I'm allergic to most of all? Gerbils. Close. Guinea pigs. Guinea, guinea pigs. That's what you've got, guinea pigs. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting like five feet away from the guinea pig cage right now, uh, which is pretty central in our house. So, and we have three of them. Two words. Guinea pig. Uh, guinea bacon. <laughs> Take care of that problem right away. Yeah, I'm probably allergic to that, too. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, so I'm allergic to my life. <laughs> so I'm on all mm-hmm. kinds of medications now. It should be interesting. You're a walking pharmacy. <laughs> well, are you really sick? Are you just sick when somebody sees you being sick? <laughs> because this dude right here wants to argue that religious people are only good when somebody's watching them. Psychologist with the University of British Columbia. His name is... Ara Norenzian. Yeah, that's right. And he argues that believers need to think God is watching in order to behave. I think he's got the wrong premise to start out with. As you read through this article, he really seems to see religion as a means to an end. It's a, it's a methodology. It's a a purpose. It's, okay, we're going to use religion to get people to be good. And, um, you know, this, this sort of real law focus. And, um, he's, he's kind of missing the point that people didn't come up with religion to uh to get people to be good people came up with religion because god said here i am <laughs> and people went oh 
Well, he, he doesn't. Well, there's a couple of things I thought reading this. Uh, first off, um, you know, experiments show religious people generally behave more kindly and generously when they have been freshly reminded in a casual or subconscious way of a morally tinged God or supernatural being. Well, yeah, I mean, anybody can tell you that. You know, kind of duh. Um, but what he doesn't realize is that there's really two religions in the world. Mm-hmm. There's the religion of the law, and there's the religion of the gospel. And what he's really talking about is the religion of the law. Right. That you're only going to be good. Yeah, he's absolutely correct. That you're going to be good when you think God is watching you because you're trying to make God happy. You're trying to earn his favor. Mm -hmm. But there's no system or understanding in his mind at all for the idea of grace. No. No, not at all. Yeah, and that's the problem with his study. Is he he has no clue about that, and so you know he's he compares it with, um, you know, if you see a police officer, you slow down, you know, if you're driving or, um, mm-hmm. and 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 stuff like that. But you know, we don't really see God as a police officer. You know, for for us, it's more, um, you know, God loves you, and so, um, oh, what was that quote I just heard not too long ago? It was, it, it's not, um, oh, man, I can't remember it now. Um, well, you see, his key thing is, 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 even though religion has been helpful in creating moral behavior, it has no mo- monopoly in producing honest and empathetic people. Well, he's absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's, that's what we argue was called, you know, he said he did, you know, study these anthropologists and economists, economists and all this other stuff that, you know, people studies and stuff. I, I could have saved him so much work because I could have just pointed him, you know, to the Lutheran confessions to talk about civil righteousness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's what he's arguing for. You know, it's all right there. They, they, you know, I hate to tell you this, buddy. The people really figured this out like five, six hundred years, you know, five hundred years ago. You know, they really did. And they called it, you know, civic or civil righteousness, that people do good things, but you don't need to, to be religious in order to do good things. <laughs> so, you know, the other thing is, is uh, I look at this and, and see, you know, he, he seems to be pointing to this and going, look, this, you know, religion doesn't, um, in a sense, doesn't change people. It doesn't necessarily make a person uh, a better, a, a better behaving person or something like that. And, um, you know, to some degree, that's true, uh, sadly, but it's true because we're still sinners. You know, it's, uh, we, we have this term simul justus et peccator. It's at the same time, saint and sinner. You know, I'm a forgiven child of God. And, um, and, and so, uh, it's, it's not a, but, you know, at the same time, I'm a sinner. And, uh, so I sin without even thinking about it. And, um, but I go to God for forgiveness, and I know that He forgives me. Uh, you know, it's a matter of of not how do I need to live uh, to get God's favor, but rather God has favored me even though I didn't deserve it. And so, knowing that, how am I going to live? Right. At the same time, I mean, it's just yeah. You know, some of the stuff is kind of funny. Um, yeah, one psychological experiment out of the dozen certified by Norizan and Sharif. Children were explicitly instructed not to look in a box and then left alone with it. Those who were previously told that a fictional supernatural agent, Princess Alice, was watching were significantly less likely to misbehave if uh, to look in the box if Princess Alice was there. But, you know, the idea is, you know, could you really equate Princess Alice necessarily with God? Um, I'm not sure you can make that argument. Uh, the second part, gee, I had a really cool thing there I was going to say before we got glitched there just a second ago. Um, oh, it doesn't seem to seem that he really did an actual study. This seems to be more of a meta study where he looked at what other articles and other people had said and then kind of made his own conclusions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now he, he did show... Uh, he, he's he's trying to sort of draw some practical uh, conclusions from this, and uh, he says that these uh, findings have political ramifications. Even though non-religious Canadians generally trust their secular governments and courts, this is a Canadian paper. Um, he said that 
States. That's not the case in countries such as Russia and Iran. In those countries, religion may be the only thing that works is keep, at keeping citizens functioning in an ethical way. You know, because in, yeah, country where you have, um, I never really thought of Russia this way, but, um, you know, in Iran, the, the Ayatollah says, you know, this is good and right and this isn't. And people go, oh, okay. You know, um, but, you know, there it's, it, that's kind of a, uh, uh, I, I don't think that that's necessarily a one to one, uh, kind of conclusion because there, there's, it's much more of a, um, uh, a theocracy. Right. So, whereas in Russia, of course, it may work in there simply because they've had their fun with a to totally secular government. Uh, it was called, you know, Stalin. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work too well. Um, no, it didn't work too well. So, uh, I think they may want with something to help temper that just a little bit. But maybe, you know what, maybe we need, and I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have a, I have a picture for this one, unfortunately, so we're going to do, just go back to our normal background. But maybe we should talk then about, you know, having a freedom from religion and a freedom from prayer and just stay away from that stuff completely. Hmm, Not doing anybody any good anyway. So your buddies back there in your home state of Wisconsin, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, have sued... Uh, President Bush and Shirley Dobson and the governor of Wisconsin. Oh, the governor of Wisconsin. We, we have to stop here because this is my favorite part of the article. Okay. She's suing Wisconsin Governor Jim Doyle because he's one of 50 governors who issued proclamations. How many governors are there? <laughs> well, according to Barack Obama, there's 57. <laughs> <laughs> one of 50. Well, wouldn't that be one of the 50? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, well, I don't know. No, no, no. Barack Obama said, you know, this, he's been in 57 states so far this year. So, you know, who knows? So. <laughs> well, you, you, you forgot state of confusion. <laughs> okay. All right. District of Columbia. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh,. Anyhow, back to this little story here. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't know. You talk about a mess. I mean, um, do we say what she's suing them for? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're suing them because of uh, this National Day of Prayer. You know, that there's this, you know, set aside this National Day of Prayer, which I don't know about you, but I have never done so much as, you know, think about, talk about, encourage. You know, I mean, the, you know, they're saying this is a, a religious thing. It's as religious as Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a day mm -hmm. when everybody is encouraged to pray to God. However, you know, he, he she, or it might understand God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not, uh, there's nothing here that's specifically Christian, Muslim, Jewish, I mean, um, you know, if you, I guess you, you know, if you want to pray to yourself, you can do it. You know, it's, it's, you know, to whatever almighty being you might happen to believe in or not believe in, uh, pray for America that day, which is exactly the same. I, it'd be interesting to read a, a Thanksgiving proclamation and see how different it is from the National Day of Prayer proclamation, because I have the sneaking suspicion it's very similar. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. I mean, I know back when I was in Rockford, they had a, a an interfaith service each year on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, the Jews, the Muslims, uh, the Luth uh, the Lutherans, the Catholics, uh, everybody was involved in this. And it, and the reason they always did it at Thanksgiving, they said, is because it's not a, a holiday that's tied to any one religion. I did not know that. Was your Lutheran church involved in that, Jim? No. <laughs> So you said Lutheran. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The, uh, the, um, the LCA and later the ELCA and then the town was. But no, I was not. I would sit there and read about it and just shake my head. <laughs> but we'll talk about interfaith services here yep, a little bit yes later. Yes, we will. <laughs> so. I, th I think that the, um, th 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 there was a good point about, um, that this could be anyone. This is just like Thanksgiving. Um, 
the lawsuit argues, or rather, uh, Shirley Dobson, or Shirley Dobson, yeah, mm, um, Annie Gaylor, she's the head of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, um, that the mandate for presidential proclamations encouraging prayer violates a constitutional ban on government officials endorsing religion. Are you aware that there is a uh, constitutional ban on government officials endorsing religion? I know that there's one about um, them establishing a specific state-run religion, but as far as I know, there is no constitutional ban on anybody standing up and saying religion is a good thing. Are you a God-fearing man, Senator? I haven't read that one in the Constitution. And I have read through the Constitution a few times. I've always thought of God as a teacher, mm -hmm. as a bringer of light, wisdom, and understanding. Right. I, it's, uh, no, I can't. I don't know where it says anything. Uh, the only thing it says is that uh, the... Um, Um, that Congress cannot make a law establishing religion. This isn't making any law establishing any religion. This is saying, if you believe in a religion, go out and pray. Now, the closest thing they can get is the fact that President Bush um, has worked very closely with um, Shirley Dobson and some other people to uh, have a, uh, you know, to make this happen each year. Um <clears throat> I don't know who Bill Clinton worked with. I do remember that he, um, you know, there's a famous episode of the National Day of Prayer Breakfast when uh, Mother Teresa stood there and spoke and condemned abortion very strongly. And, you know, <laughs> he and his wife sat there while everybody else gave her a standing ovation. They just kind of sat there stony face. So I guess he was missing Monica at the time or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know. And you think, mm, you know, she is 50 years younger. You know, she might be all right. Yeah, but anyhow, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, so. Um, was it last what? time that we talked about <laughs> respecting those in authority over us? He's not an authority. Not anymore. Not anymore, you know. So, you know, he's, <laughs> so he's you fair know. game. <laughs> Eighth Commandment doesn't apply. <laughs> <laughs> it only, public officials only the fourth commandment applies and you know once they're out then <laughs> none of them apply <laughs> well you know it applies you know I, but I'm just you know, you know I, I'm just kind of assuming what he means and thinking at the moment wondering if you know one of her nuns would like to intern for him or something you know give her a hand up but back to this before we get in any more trouble. Um, I'm going to start hearing from the Secret Service. Uh, but the uh, uh, but the idea was, though, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a long honored tradition, you know. Um, you know, Nixon, who, uh, 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 um, you know, Kennedy, who was Catholic, Nixon, who was Quaker, you know, had these National Day of Prayer proclamations. Unless he stands up and says that all, um, you know, if you're going to do this, you must be Christian, mm -hmm. and only Christians need apply, or, you know, Lutherans or Evangelicals or however specific you or Muslims or however specific you want to get it, mm -hmm. uh, then he's perfectly on solid ground. But you see, I guess the problem, of course, with these people, then it's it's freedom from religion. They don't believe in freedom of religion. It's, you know... Yes, but freedom from religion is not constitutional. Right. Now, you are free to not believe in God, but the problem is atheism is a religion too. So, you you just there's no such thing as being free from religion. And boy, you know, and you say, well, organized religion. Well, you don't get much more organized than the Freedom from Religion Foundation. On the other hand, you know, I like the fact that they're you know, that they've sued Bush because I don't know if they realized it, but by the time a federal court gets to hearing this, he's not going to be president anymore. <laughs> It'll be thrown out. <laughs> you know, he's, I can guarantee you 
I get, I don't make too many guarantees, but I can guarantee you absolutely he will not win the election next month. <laughs> and on, you know, January 21st, he will be gone. He will no longer be president. So when the National Day of Prayer comes up next May, he will not be sitting, he will not be sitting in the White House. <laughs> so, you know, why, why, they, they might as well wait and, 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 you know, sue Barack Obama when he becomes president, you know, because, you know, He's going to be the next one. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that happening. Poll say. Yeah, okay. okay. It's it's pretty rare for the. You don't uh, see Barack yeah. Obama becoming president. No, no, no. Not, <laughs> based on the polls, <laughs> that that looks pretty, you know, definite. But um, if the you know polls have been wrong though, so we'll see. Um, but uh, you know the the number of people. I mean, she's suing the White House press secretary. Because she executes the proclamation, she just reads the page. Doesn't have a life. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, doesn't she better things to do? All right, we're talking about someone who, well, actually, it was her mother at the time, um, sued our school, my high school, because on uh, National uh, Schools Week or Education Week or something like that. My school, because I went to school in Madison, um, went to the um, the Capitol and sang a few songs, mostly to promote seatbelt safety. <laughs> um, but we did sing a song uh, that was like a couple lines from a psalm. Um, it was like, sing, O ye heavens, the Lord has done it. Shout, O ye lower parts of the earth. Um, it was, you know, it was one of these songs that was... Uh, it was from a psalm, so it could have been, you couldn't argue that it was really promoting one religion over another. But we happened to sing it in the Capitol Rotunda, um, which, because, and my uh, choir director said, hey, the place has great acoustics. This is the closest to a cathedral these kids are ever going to get. And um, and so, but yeah, she sued our school because because some you know legislator might be walking from his office to somewhere else and hear us singing, and um and 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 be somehow influenced that way, somehow, and that would be bad. Apparently, just keep in mind this is a woman who's known around Madison as the Grinch because she's always trying to get rid of the uh, the Christmas trees. Um, around the Capitol and stuff like that. So. Okay. Okay. Let me ask another question. Would she get ready, rid of an interfaith surfing prayer surface? <laughs> now, if she's going to go after something, this is something she should go after. I tell you, this is, this is, this is, you it, know, this is just sad. This is separation of church and waves, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is out by L.A. somewhere. Huntington Beach. Now, this is, I don't know, this is my kind of service, but we had them. Um, only because they, you know, they had this, they, they have uh, 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 about 400 people out there. That's, this is incredible. And it was it was hosted by two surfing priests, one a... Um, um, Franciscan monk, uh, uh, Franciscan monk, and another in a congregation, and they had uh, the, the Catholics had a prayer, and the Jews had a prayer, and the Muslims had a prayer, and read and from the Quran. Read from the Quran. From, yeah, yeah, the Muslims had a thing from the a reading from the Quran, and they they poured holy water into the ocean, and the other ran down to uh, as the band played Wipeout. Now, <laughs> I do hope you're going to have the, the laugh there with a the giggle with. And wipe out, you know, at the background there, uh, you know, uh, by the Safaris. I mean, one of the greatest bands of all time. Also best known for their wonderful hit Surfer Joe in the 1960s. And Dale said, they're going to be, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm familiar with Wipeout, you know, but uh, uh, Surfer Joe kind of predates me. I think you're showing your age a little Thanks. bit there. It was great when I was in first grade, man. I'll tell you, it was a cool <laughs> song. Hey, I'm 48. I'll be 48 at the end of this year, so I'm, I'm darn proud of it, child. Yeah. My, parents anyway, so, even, my parents weren't even married yet. 
<laughs> uh, but back to, um, uh, uh, I mean, you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's my kind of worship service where you have end with wipeout, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know, everybody that's against contemporary worship services is going to point to this. And go see, they're playing Wipeout in this, you know, in the church service. Like, okay, that's not the biggest problem here. <laughs> you know, we've got a couple of Roman Catholic priests, so you know, arguably Christian, right? And then you've got this Jew speaking, and the the you know the 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 Jewish speaking is is pretty um, um, not much to it, you know. Um, but <clears throat> could kind of could be anybody saying anything. Um, but then the, you know, the Muslim comes in and he's actually reading out of the Quran and, um, trying to find the, and, he, and he's like, um, ah, I had it here and no, I can't find it. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, it is he who subjected the seed to you. that You may eat of its fresh fish and take forth from it ornaments to wear. I'm thinking that uh, most surfers are not hoping to end up with ornaments on them from the water. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, and I kind of like the Jewish prayer here. Some people pray by the oceans, others by the mountains. Some people pray in force, and others by a calm, cool lake. We hope that those voices will join together to thank God. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure what that meant. I have no idea what that meant. So, so you know, this is like, okay, if you take, um, you know, this is this going back to uh, that whole thing about law religions. You know, you, you could say, hey, you know, we all believe in the same God. You know, he's the God who made the oceans and all that kind of stuff. And like, yeah, but you know what? There's some pretty big differences here. And when you've got people from three very different religions, or um, at least mm -hmm. uh, two very different religions and, and a couple of religions that really like to think they're really different, but they're not, um, you know, you, you're saying that, oh, there's, there's really not that much difference, there's, it's no big deal. And, uh, but you know what? It is a big deal. Um, you know, we talked before about law and grace and, uh, you know, that kind of defines the difference between Christianity and, uh, these other religions like, um, Islam and, uh, Judaism, because, you know, that's, they will generally agree with us on sort of first article things. You know, I believe in God, the father mm -hmm. almighty maker of heaven and earth, but that's about where the similarities end. But see, we've got that whole second and third article stuff. The, um, you know, Jesus, uh, salvation by grace, the um, Holy Spirit giving us faith, and, you know, things like that. And, and that's stuff they would disagree with. So, you know, I don't, I don't think we're really accomplishing anything by pretending that those differences don't exist. I, you know, I struggle with things like this because, okay, it's kind of like Thanksgiving Day. You know, use that analogy again. I mean, that, uh, uh, you know, at least everybody there is acknowledging, you know, that this world didn't come to be on its own, that there is a God who created it, and we should take care of the world that God created. I think those are good affirmations to make. Sure. Um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with making those kind of affirmations. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a worship service or worship setting. True. Yeah, you know, there I think is where you, I mean, I don't know. What, if there's an acknowledgement that we all are coming, coming from very different perspectives, and there's a very different understanding of, of, of the, like, second and third article stuff here, I mean, that each person, you know, would go up there and do five minutes of whatever they want to do, and nobody else is going to, you know, say one thing or another, and we're going to, you know, the, the, the crowd's going to be equally respectful, uh, at least, of course, until they start playing Wipeout. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I had an opportunity, got a phone call from a, um, um, the Veterans 
cemetery in uh, uh, back in Springfield, and the state had set aside it. Bill had developed a veteran cemetery, and so they wanted to um, have a dedication for it. Well, they were going to have a dedication, but they also wanted to have a, which was going to be pretty secular. But they wanted you no, know, real was going to be just secular. But they wanted to have a religious dedication the day before, or the week before. I can't remember which it was. And so they asked me to take part. And uh, there was a multitude of different Christian groups there. And I remember there was one Jewish man, a uh, Jewish rabbi, and I can't remember the other one that was thing that was the other religion that was represented. But the guy said, you each have five minutes. Do whatever you want. You know, and there was no, as far as I could tell, no understanding that other than wanting to honor, honor the veterans, that's the only thing we had in common. And one guy stood up. I mean, the Presbyterian guy stood up and read the, the Gettysburg Address. I thought, boy, how much deeper can you get than that? <laughs> um, the Roman Catholic guy read a, a collect out of their, their missal. I remember that. The um, I can't remember what the Jewish guy did. Um, a guy from Bethany Assembly of God led everybody singing the Navy hymn. Um, the, uh, I can't remember the name of it um, offhand now, but yes, it's, it's you know the God of the the restless wave. Um, and I stood up and proclaimed the resurrection. You know, I said, uh, you know, the Christian hope is that Christ, Christ is that Jesus died and rose again, and those who believe in Him will live forever. And uh, I used Him, uh, you know, I I kind of used the, the veterans as a uh, type of Christ that, you know, they, they went to battle to win and he went to battle against Satan to win and his victory was in his death and his grave. So I got my five minutes. I was quoted in the paper, not about Jesus, but about, you know, soldiers. So they, they like that part. Um, well, you know, I guess at and, some point there, there comes a point where, um, is it, I guess you have to answer the question, is it better to, to uh, decline the offer and not have the gospel proclaimed or to go and possibly cause some confusion. Although if it's just, you know, each one stands up and says something, it's not some sort of organized service. Um, you know, at that point it's sort of debatable whether you could even consider it a service per se. It's just a, a you know, bunch of people standing up and saying a few words um, right. It was. It was. It was considered a, de- a dedication. That was what it was called. It wasn't really called a service of dedication or anything. It was just called the dedication. I mean, okay. but how much more gospel can you want than you'll find in the Gettysburg Address? That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. So, what I can't get out of the story is that the priests didn't seem not to go beyond, you know, the fact that God created the world, and that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because if you're going to talk about water, well, then you could talk about, you know, um, you know, the waters of baptism. You could talk about the waters of Christ baptism. You could talk, you know, a, you could do, you know, Noah and the flood. You, you could do a lot of, there's a lot of wording there that you could do. And, and it could be, you know, in order to hold this thing publicly and stuff. That they had to have this, uh, you know, that they had to have the other religions involved, otherwise the this, this city would not necessarily give them, or whoever gave them the permit to go out there and do this would give it to them. Yeah, so there may be some things like that that they had to work with. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying they could have worked with it, but from what I read there, it was just kind of like, you know, we all believe the same thing. We just, uh, you know, take different roads to get there. And you can't do that. You can't say that. That's not accurate. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, whoever hits the biggest wave is toast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's the problem is it, they just, it, okay, if you'll pardon the pun, they sort of watered it down so bad um, that there really wasn't much to it. Um, Apparently not. So I'm, But what I, if it was part of a I'm, battery commercial? Ah, now that's something else entirely. Have you seen this one? Well, I, I I only saw it because it was on the 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 CrossFeed News website when I checked the story out, and there you had the YouTube video embedded. Which, by the way, um, if you haven't gone to the the CrossFeed News website, 
Dale just did a major upgrade uh, to Drupal 5. Uh, if you get the crossfeed this tool and use it from Safari or Firefox, it, you can now um, embed uh, images from your story. Um, you can, uh, uh, I guess, you can do embed the video there. I'd never seen you do that before. It's just really a nice upgrade. Uh, except for some reason, when you click it, it doesn't put your uh, the the, the uh, URL in automatically the way it used to. Uh, hopefully, they can get that glitch fi- figured out. Yeah. But, or you can. That's yeah, good. But uh, it's really uh, just a nice upgrade, and Dale must have worked very hard to to, to implement it because it really does look good, and you add it a lot. Well, honestly, most of that stuff it was probably capable of doing before. I just had it disabled, and. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll enable it. The main reason I upgraded was because, uh, two, two reasons. Number one, uh, there was some major security stuff that was not being taken care of and I wanted to make sure that it had, uh, good security on the site, um, so we wouldn't get hacked, hopefully. Um, the other thing was, uh, you know, the, the spam's kind of slowed down, but there's still quite a bit of it and we put some new spam, uh, protection in there. So, uh, it's, it's some pretty good stuff. So it, it, sh- it should be less intrusive, um, than before, but more effective. So if anybody's familiar with Malum, that's the system we're using. So doesn't ring a bell with me. I'm sure it doesn't. Uh, okay. Good. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and show this video though? The first time I saw this video, or this, uh, this commercial, I mean, I was, I was watching TV. It was the game show network, I think. And, um, and, you know, this ad comes on and I immediately thought Mormons. Like, wow, they, you know, Mormons really did a good ad there, you know, because they do these kind of ads. Uh, not animated like this usually, but, you know, this sort of religious ads on, um, uh, national TV stations and stuff. And then it gets all the way to the end, and you see Interstate Batteries. And then uh, interstatebatteries.com slash uh, God's Love or something like that. And I went, huh? <laughs> what? And, and like, what, what, is, what is Interstate Batteries? <laughs> is, is that like some kind of weird code name for a church or something? And so I went and looked it up, and... Oh no, this is like this huge battery company that sells more batteries than Sears. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> okay, not being a, you know, a car junkie or anything like that. I was not aware of that. They do laptop batteries too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I was absolutely astonished, but they've got this whole write up. You, you click the link and the, the link is in the, um, if you, if you find this story at crossfeednews.com, uh, you'll see the link. And they've got this, this story <clears throat> or this, um, this sort of, you know, gospel message, uh, law gospel talks about God is just and, um, and, uh, and, you know, sins need to be forgiven and, and Jesus came and took care of our sins by dying on the cross. And, um, you know, and then it goes into, a um, like one of these sinners prayer, got to, you know, ask Jesus into your heart kind of deal. Which didn't surprise me, except yeah, evangelicals, you know. Um, I, I think it was a modified four spiritual laws as I read it. it. Kind of reminded me of Bill Bright's four spiritual laws that he used to track, he used to put out, which is very simple law gospel. But in the yeah, with the sinner's prayer, but I thought it was a cool. I thought it was a cool video. I thought it was a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I went, why aren't we doing something like this? Why does it take a battery company to get the gospel out to the world? Why are churches doing this? You know, why did I think it was the Mormons the first time I saw it instead of some Christian denomination? You know, obviously, if you're going to do this on a nationwide thing, this is this would be like a denominational thing. If if it were a church body, it wouldn't be just one, you know, individual congregation. But um, 
But I went, gee, you know, Mormons do these things, battery companies do these things. Would it make sense for a Christian denomination to do something like this? Well, um, there, some some do. I well I remember that they had the um, the United Church of Christ ads a few years ago. Well, yeah, but those had know, no gospel with the bouncers. No oh, that's true. Um, and you know now the ELCA has its ads out there. I don't know if you've seen theirs. Uh, his work, our hands, kind of the social justice uh, understanding, really. Kind Again, of, kind no, of what gospel. All about. no gospel. But that's true. But then there was the. Um, the series that we did, the LCMS did a few years ago, uh, when uh, Al Berry was president of the Synod, and um, but I can't remember. It was uh, you know the, when we were doing the "Tell the Good News About Jesus" theme. But you know I can't what? remember. It's what, funny you mention that those were about. because I just ran across there was a box in the back of my office, and I've been, I've been you know the clutter's building up, so I've been starting to kind of throw things out, and I came across the it was on a VHS tape, um, and. And I came across. Got it. What well, they were? Ad. They were old, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are <in> VHS. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually I came across a copy of it, and I went, "Oh yeah, I vaguely remember that." And then I threw it out. <laughs> and they were they were very well done ads. And I remember um, uh, guy vice president of the Senate at the time, Dale Meyer, a Lutheran hour speaker, and. Um, and I remember him, one of the questions he said he's often asked was, why can't we have any commercials like the Mormons? Yeah. And if those were, they were the kind of warm, fuzzy commercials. See, no, we should be doing those things all the time. I mean, that should be like an ongoing thing. People should see these ads come on and go, ah, it's the Missouri Synod Lutherans again. You know? I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just going to... You know, we've got, we, we live in the information age, you know? I mean, it's so easy. I mean, look at, you know, Jim and I are doing, and, and, you know, obviously it could be done a whole lot better than this if you've got the, um, people with a little bit of skill and, and, and money and, and that, you know, that aren't doing with this, they're with webcams and, and video chat software. Um, but, you know, why aren't we producing good quality stuff that's going to get people's attention, you know, hire, um, hire, was it Chit Day, the, the company that does the Apple commercials and have them, um, you know, work with some of our people to, to put some ads together, you know, that's really going to catch people's attention and, and they'll go, you know, they'll be zipping through it with their DVRs and they'll go, huh, what's that? And they'll back it up and watch it, you know, and the people will be talking about it and stuff, you know, this could be happening. But it's not. <laughs> it takes a battery. Hi, I'm company. a Lutheran. <laughs> and I'm a PC. <laughs> no, you got to do like the new Microsoft ones, you know. Like, I'm a PC and I'm a Lutheran. <laughs> I'm a PC and I'm... <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it would be... It would be... <laughs> I'm PC and I'm UCC. <laughs> That would be very true. <laughs> that would be very, very accurate. Um, but, or we can say, I'm Assembly God, and I am Prosperity Gospel. And I have a new house to show it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to lose that house. And, and, and God gave me this house, but the devil set the uh, interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, this is uh, an article out of Time Magazine, uh, and uh, I came across it. I was surprised at how popular it was, but it was asking the way of you know, one of the questions of the, the whole idea. And Dale and I have talked about this, you know, recently in dealing with uh, Sarah Palin, um, Pentecostal Christianity and the prosperity gospel, and that you know that uh, you know this idea. Uh, and also, by the way, uh, it's interesting that this guy came across it writing about black televangelism. Uh, Jonathan Walt Walton, religion professor, University of California in Riverside. And, um, because I, I guess TD, with TD Jake, yeah, that he's also prosperity gospel. And, uh, you know, he says, um, you know, this prosperity gospel has encouraged people to get dicey mortgages. God caused the bank to ignore my credit score and bless me with my first house. 
Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he says, the pastor is not going to say, go down to Wachovia and get a loan. But I have heard, even if you have a poor credit rating, God can still bless you if you put some faith out there. That is, make a big donation to the church. You'll get that house or that car or that apartment. <laughs> I like the next part. Definitely goes on that a preacher might say, if you give this offering, God will give you a house. And if they did get the house, people did think that it was an answer to prayer, when in fact it was really a bad banking policy. And then it goes on a little later. He calls it thinly disguised pastor enrichment scam. <laughs> you know, it's funny because this this whole thing, this is like the um, this is all that that uh, back in the what was it the eighties? Yeah, um, the the Jimmy Swaggart and and uh, uh, J- uh, Jim Baker. And, and all that kind of stuff and, and all the scandals and everything. And, you know, it's the whole, there was, uh, I've got an old, uh, if anybody out there familiar with the Ubers, um, they're a, a band from the, the upper peninsula of Michigan. And, um, they, they did this bit on one of their, uh, tapes, cause this was before CDs. Um, and they had Reverend Jerry send me money. <laughs> And it was to talk about deer hunting and stuff, and and they they drink that evil brew, and most of all, they forget to send me money. <laughs> but, um, it wouldn't be Jimmy Swagger. Swagger wasn't so much prosperity gospel. Maybe he was. Jim Baker definitely was, and he realized he was wrong in it. By the way, it, it's interesting though, as negative as that is, and and I really do think it is. The other interesting thing was this uh, guy, uh, this Jonathan Walton said, you know, on the other hand, he says, there is a positive thing to it. Uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, it can empower people who have been taught to see themselves as financially or even culturally useless, to feel they're worthy of having more and doing more and being more. In some cases, the philosophy has matured with its practitioners, encouraging good financial habits and entrepreneurship. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's the, um, that, that's the exception to the rule. The problem is, it's not the gospel. Well, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, you know, this is this. You know, you can learn, you know, entrepreneur, good entrepreneurship and good leadership skills in an MBA program. You know, it doesn't mean you know God is is, is going to give you a blessing, and um, you know, and that's the problem is that you know. On the other hand, he said, I saw this guy, Walt, and he says, you would think the current economic conditions would undercut their theology. But, you know, it doesn't. He says, um, there's this uh, congregant at Brownsville Assembly of God near Pensacola. And he said, last Sunday, uh, he wrote a note to this uh, member, wrote a note to the pastor. He said, last Sunday, he said, if anyone needed a miracle to come up, so I did. I was receiving foreclosure papers, so I asked you to anoint a picture of my home, and you did, and your wife joined with you in prayer as I cried. I went home feeling good something was going to happen, and on Friday, I got a phone call from my mortgage company, and they came up with a new payment for the next three months of only $200. My mortgage is usually eighteen ten twenty. Uh, I wish my mortgage was only ten twenty. dollars uh, Praise God for his mercy and grace. I mean... <sighs> Buddy, I got news for you. If your mortgage is usually ten twenty, and you're only paying two hundred for three months, that means you're going to owe the bank another twenty four hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. You're making probably an interest only payment, if even that. Right. You know, I mean, short term it sounds good. Reality, long term wise, it doesn't work. If you can't afford a mortgage of ten twenty, don't ever move to uh, Massachusetts. That's we call that kind of money rent up here. <laughs> I guess the the biggest point, and this is this is what Jim already mentioned, is that it's not the gospel, right? This is this is the kind of stuff that you get. You know those um, those posters that you see in cubicle farms and like. Uh, teamwork and there'll be like some uh, some picture of like the woods or something like that and there'll be some little slogan underneath it or something like that mm-hmm. you know 
success mm-hmm. parations is what they call those or in something like that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm just, I'm trying to imagine the, um, you know, like faith, um, what you have to have when the house that God gave you is being taken away from you because of foreclosure, you know, <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> But, you know, what, what should these churches be talking about? They should not be saying, you know, God loves you, so he is going to give you a house. They should be saying, God loves you, and so he is, has bought you a mansion in paradise with his blood. You know, I mean, that's what it's all about. And, you know, it's about, not not that you're going to be wealthy and comfortable, but rather you're going to suffer trials, all right? But God is with you, and he's going to carry you through it. And no matter what happens to you, no matter how much you, you struggle, you know how the story ends. That was kind of the message uh, of my sermon this morning, is that, you know, we don't have to worry about things because God is with us. And, um, and we know how the story ends. We know that, um, that the, uh, <laughs> what did I say this morning? <laughs> that the, the conflict is already taken care of. Jesus has already won the victory. And we know that it ends with the resurrection. And and, that and they he's all lived happily us. ever after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really does end that way. <laughs> and you know, so um, you know, we just have to hang in there until then, and, and trust God to carry us through it, and you know, and and ask Him to to give us faith to persevere. And you know, that's what it's about. It's not about building up riches here. Oh, very nice, Ben. So I, I just. I understand the philosophy behind prosperity gospel. What I don't understand is how much of the Bible you have and history you have to absolutely ignore to make that leap. I know it's popular because, hey, if I can go to church and instead of them, um, you know, if I can, you know, put my, put a, for every dollar I put in the plate, God's going to give me 10 bucks back, you know, <laughs> <woo-hoo>. <laughs> but you know, the riches that God promises us are not necessarily financial riches. So, and, and quite frankly, out of all of the different riches that God promises us, if I had to pick and choose, what kind of a fool would choose financial riches? I mean, really? Oh, there's plenty of them that would do that. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, you know, Jim Baker. Uh, hey, speaking of fools. <clears throat> We got a uh, comment on our YouTube from our one on uh, how you offended over Kenny versus Spenny. And uh, this guy, uh, uh, three times he tells us he's laughing at us. Now, it's funny because the guy says, always oh, stumble on this because Kenny and Spenny, wow, you guys are retards, you know. But, buddy, Obi Vince, we made you laugh. Mm-hmm. Three times you kept saying how much laughing you were doing. You know, you guys are lame. Well, you are laughing. You are entertained. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, let's, let's be realistic. Um, you know, our, if you look at, and you can, you go to YouTube or, or one of the other sites and you see our numbers and we're not getting thousands of people. Is this the same one where he, I don't have it in front of me where he said something about filming his friend with a box on his head or something oh, like that? Uh, what do you have? Like 50, by the way, he, uh, uh, Obi Vince, you might want to learn. Uh, punctuation and grammar <laughs> yeah. would really help. Uh, uh, you know, what do you have? Like 15 viewers throughout the whole world? Impressive. I have a video of, uh, on here, my friend walking out of the box on his head that got a thousand views. Um, you know, but then we, uh, uh, but Obi Vince, how many of your of, uh, people subscribe? To your friend walking around with his head on, you know, a box on his head. Yeah, we, well, this is, you know, not, I mean, I often joke we have like, you know, all four of our viewers out there. Uh, but the reality is, 
uh, it is subscribed to by some people. Mm-hmm. And there are people, uh-huh. you know, and it goes up over not only YouTube, but several other things. So, uh, eh, okay, so we probably don't have, you know, uh, uh, hundreds and thousands, but, you know. But, Obi Vince, if you think we're a couple of retards, don't watch us. It's really easy. Yeah, and you probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't. You know, we're not standard YouTube fare. You know, we're 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 something a little different, and and that's all right. You know, we enjoy doing this, and and we've gotten enough uh, feedback from people that uh, and I think there's some people out there that enjoy watching and and listening. So, mm-hmm. hey, cool. So you know, and and we're hoping that uh, that our message is uh, is uplifting. We you know we hope we made you laugh. Hope we didn't offend anybody too much, and if we did, we apologize. Um, and, uh, and you if know. we didn't, we apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, chances are some of the stuff we say probably should be offended. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, we just, we, we want to let people know how much God loves you. We want to let you, let people know about Christ. And, you know, if you already know, we'd like to remind you cause it's great news to be reminded of. And, uh, and, you know, and, and if we can have a little bit of fun doing it and maybe do it just a little bit differently than anybody else has ever thought to do it, or, or maybe a little, di- maybe, maybe somebody else has thought to do it that way and went, no, that'd be a bad idea. <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet, but, you know, um, as long as people keep tuning in and, you know, and watching and stuff, we'll probably keep on doing this. So, mm-hmm. but we do appreciate you watching. You appreciate your time. We would like some feedback. Yep. At uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. You can always reach us there. Or you can, if you're watching us on iTunes, you can click on iTunes and take you right to our comment page. Usually. Or you can give comments mm-hmm. on the um, crossfeednews.com page. Like I said, been renewed, revamped, upgraded. Uh, so I encourage you to use it and to submit your own stories. Um, oh, the other neat thing, by the way, on the stories, the points are back. Yeah, oh, the wait, point. we it's have something else. Point something else. What? almost forgot. We have a comic book review to do. We do. I almost forgot <laughs> about that, yes. Do you have yours handy? Uh, I No, I don't. I don't have my, my copy handy. Hold on. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me grab mine. We interrupt your regular broadcast to bring you this important news bulletin. Actually, we are two laboratory mice who wish to be on your show as part of an intricate plan to take over the world. What now, Brian? We should flee in terror. Yes, that would be the wisest course. Okay, I went and got mine too. Yeah. There it is, right there. Yep, Mecca Manga Bible Stories. We said we were going to do this last, uh, that they were going to send us one, and which we really appreciate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Paul. This is awesome. <laughs> right. Um, it's, uh, the, the first one is David and Goliath, and we reported on this couple, uh, what was a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. So. First off, I absolutely love the cover painting. Yeah, that is of- one of the. It's kind of dark on on your screen, but yeah, okay, yeah. Dale's comes off much better. I'm gonna, uh, to me, a, a comic book cover should make you want to read what's on the inside, and that cover does. Mm-hmm. That cover mm-hmm. grabbed my attention the moment I opened the envelope. I don't know about you, but it really grabbed my attention. Um, whoever did that, I love paint. I'm a sucker for painted covers anyway, uh, but I just think that is just such a, a wonderful cover. Yeah. Now. You open it up, and you now the colors. I I wasn't real thrilled with the colors because they're kind of washed out. Um, which I don't know, maybe is the point because it's supposed to be kind of like Israel, and and so it's real kind of dusty and rocky and and stuff like that. Um, I mean they do some cool stuff with. Uh, you, know, you can see that the word bubbles are are black and red and and stuff like that, and all of the. Now I thought that the villains were supposed to all be robots. But if you look closely, they all have, um, or well, not all of them, but the the sort of uh, guys in charge, including uh, Goliath, they have brains. There's like this sort of uh, glass, you know, bubble kind of thing with a brain. And so they're actually not robots, they're cyborgs. 
Uh, they're mostly a robot, but they, they seem to have, and, and when, uh, when David finally kills Goliath, and, uh, you know, we talked about that where they were saying they wanted to make this kind of family friendly, and, um, and so that, you know, younger kids could read it. Uh, you know, here you've got, uh, Goliath being killed, and there's, it's, um, it smashes his little brain case and, and you see his brain there. And then, uh, when he cuts off his, his robotic head, there's blood flowing out of one of the pipes. So I thought that was oil. It's red, red oil. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. things I liked about it since you mentioned it. I love the little spaceships there with, with Goliath there and, uh, this, this particular page, you know, the little spaceships up in the air. I thought that was cool. Uh, I love the robotic sheep. I think the little robot sheep are just so cool. I just thought that they were absolutely great and, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and hanging out there with little, uh, glass eyes and, uh, uh, uh things for the mouths there. I was trying to figure out what their function would be if you had robot sheep. I don't know, but I thought <laughs> that they were cool. And my other favorite picture of the whole thing is David in his army get up there. I don't know if that how well you can see that, but uh, uh, they got this great, uh, uh, yeah, right there. And that look on his face in there, I just think that look on his face is just priceless. You know, it's like, what am I doing with all this? And the little robots to help him get into it, I just think he's great. Yep. Yeah, so they they kind of remind me of Herbie from the old uh, Fantastic Four cartoon. So I I mean it was I was amazed really kind of at how much I liked it because I'm not a manga fan. I mean I'm much more to the I'm much more of the George Perez, uh, John Byrne, our Alex Ross, uh, uh, realistic artwork type of thing. Uh, this type of stuff with the exaggerated eyes and. And things, it's just really not, tends not to be my style very much. I mean, I don't even like Ed McGinnis very much. Uh, and his, his drawing of Superman just drove me crazy because it was kind of manga inspired and I was so glad when he was off the book. But, uh, you know, I really did get a kick out of reading this. I really did. This is great when, when Goliath is standing in front of David. You see, uh, David's kind of standing there on this rock and, and all you see, you, you see Goliath's toes, and there's David just looking up, and the word bubble is is just like nothing, like because uh, uh. <laughs> they really you know kind of exaggerated the size difference. It's beautiful. Although I have to complain, his gun, all right, was uh, it was basically like a crossbow that shoots stones, okay. Like a slingshot, okay? David didn't use a slingshot. He used a sling. All right? There's a difference. <laughs> it's just one of my pet peeves about this story. <laughs> so, a oh, cool sword, though. He, when he uh, picks up Goliath's sword, and it kind of shrinks down so that he can actually pick it up and uh, and cut off Goliath's head with it. So, it's it's a cool-looking sword. Um, and then it, and it ends with uh, Saul coming up to David, and he says, "Tell me about your father, boy." And he says, "His name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem, which is just a great, you know. We kind of mentioned this when we uh, first reported on this, the kind of tie-in, like, oh yeah, oh Bethlehem, oh 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 oh, where have we heard of Bethlehem before? Hmm, around Christmas time seems to me." Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just thought it was an absolutely awesome story. Uh, and I can't find all the places, but it's kind of fun sometimes on some of these, uh, 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 like, uh, on the, um, one of the robot sheep, it says, you know, uh, P, I can't make it, it was like PD, PK Dick Limited. You know, so they have these company things on the sides of some of these, uh, different products and, uh, Oh, and yeah, a little, uh, one of the robots using a little bit of, uh, uh, um, drill, you know, Kubrick. So I didn't know if that was a, a shout out to, uh, Stanley Kubrick, the great, uh, uh, director, 
or exactly who that was actually, you know, meant to be. I was kind of looking for something that said Kirby Incorporated on the side, you know, but there's no little black dots everywhere, so. Mm. So, and then it has a couple little filler pieces. There's a, a Beatitudes with a, a couple kind of weird looking bees. Um, looks like something from like, uh, like the Rugrats style of, uh, and, and, and the other is a life and time of Jehoshaphat Jones, and yeah, and, and yeah, it's it's that that Nick Toon, no, that uh, yeah, Nick Toon's mm-hmm. uh, Nickelodeon style of artwork. Yeah, and it's um, I mean, these is these are moral stories, like you know, Veggie Tales kind of stuff, you know. Um, so they're they're cute and they're 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 nice little kind of illustrations and stuff, you know. So there's real, except for that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of gospel, um, in this thing. You know, I, I would have liked to see some, a little bit more of a Jesus kind of mention or, or, um, you know, there's definitely the sense in the David and Goliath story that it's not David that won. It was God that won. Um, you know, that he's the, the, the victor here. And, um. So, so I think, you know, that, and I think you can work off of that. Now I let my, uh, my daughter read this and uh, she's a teenager and, and I said, here, take a look at this, see what you think of it. And she read it. She's like, this is cool. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so it got her stamp of approval too. So again, thank you very much, Paul. And, uh, we really did appreciate it. It was a great gift to get it. Um, and uh it will be double bagged in in my boxes with uh you know my uh uh with my first edition of Batman the Dark Knight Returns um so it'll take a very special spot in my 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 collection yep. Yep. so anything else this week my friend nope that's all i've got just reminding okay. everybody you find interesting religious news stories or religious comic books for that matter um you know post a link up at uh, crossfeednews.com Take care, and we will see you then next week. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless you.